I have here a piece of quarter inch dowel. I've uh, had this for many, many years. It was one of many dowels that I had. It used to be 36 inches long. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it for special purposes, for poking purposes. Now, what I've done here is I've uh, put it in my pencil sharpener and sort of made it pointy. And then I took my uh, sanding stick and I've got it sanded nice and smooth here on the tip. Won't scratch anything. And I'm going to try and keep it somewhere, uh, you know, so that I'm not going to be misplacing it. And that way, when I want to poke at something to illustrate, uh, well, it'll uh, work out a lot better than using something sharp that's going to scratch the paint off something or tear up Stefan's book or, you know. And not only that, you'll always know that you're looking at a quarter inch dowel. So that means that you're going to be able to relate the size. Yeah, if this is a quarter inch, you'll know the other is either bigger than or smaller than. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see if I can not misplace this now. At the end of yesterday's episode, we were talking about getting these last little six pieces of photo etch on and we had just found the little slot that this thing can go up and through it's on the other side of the deck there of course you can't see it now but we did look at it yesterday maybe I'll insert a clip but this is supposed to go up and through hey there it goes hold this down there we go yeah supposed to go something like that now I think the best way again to glue this on is to lay everything on its side and then we can get this in the in the right position and let's try not to scratch our newly painted funnel here once again I'll zoom in and you'll be able to see there's a bit of an, an outline right here so that you can tell where to get this this end in okay now to try out our poking stick for the first time. Okay, you can see here where there's an outline where this is supposed to go. And uh, I think the idea will be to you know, to hold this down here. Now there, yeah, there is stuff on there, but it'll all brush away, including any little white marks from the uh, primer. Uh, I was noticing they brush off quite easy. Anyway, you, you get the idea here. The idea is, uh, I think, will be to just get one end glued in position. I have the same problem with this poking stick as I did with anything else. Okay, so that's, it's supposed to go something like that. This goes here, then I think this is supposed to come up and touch right there. I'll get it. I think the, the best thing for me to do would be to try and CA this, this tip right, right there. And uh, then adjust everything else. Now, I don't see why this shouldn't work. If I put a little tiny, little tiny drop of uh, CA Oh, I don't know if I want to use thin because it'll wick into that flat paint just the way the Tamiya Extra Thin does. So maybe I'll see if I can't just put a little bit of medium right about right, right on the other side of right there. And then, you know, this, this does not have to be, you know, glued all the way along. It'd be nice if the tip was because, uh, well, I came loose now. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, here's the plan. Gonna take a little bit of CA. This is my CA medium. I might have mixed it up just a little bit too thin here. That yeah, looks about right. Now, the idea is I'll try and apply it to the underside of this. Okay. Where is it here? There it is. Now I don't want to be touching the paint. Do another 
another one. Another one. Okay, now when I take away the toothpick, and then I use my poking stick. Look at that. You know, this whole thing could have maybe been up about a fraction of a millimeter. It's okay down here anyway. And this was the damage end. It turned out not too bad. We'll take a real close look at that later sometime. You know, when I put this piece of tape on, I should have had it with one corner still up. Okay. Now, how would it be if I put a little bit of glue right under there? I found a photograph that actually shows this thing. Now mind you, it shows the one, this one here, that we're going to be gluing on the other side later. But you can see that it comes up and it looks like something comes out of the end of it. Now if this is a photograph, if we find one of Stefan's drawings that actually look like real high quality photographs, but they're not, they're just drawings, they could be anything. Uh, it appears that this is like maybe metal plating and it's to protect something that is extremely important. Who knows, this might have been some sort of armor armor plating. Uh, I'll see if I can find one of Stefan's drawings, and uh, in the meantime, we'll put this one on next. Okay, here's a drawing. And this is a drawing of the one that we just glued on a few minutes ago. And uh, it, it comes up and you don't really see what, what's up here. Well, yeah, you kind of do, but the, the camouflage stripe shadows it. There's, there's something coming out of there. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry about that. Let me just move the book down. I <laughs> guess I should watch my monitor. Uh, okay. All right, let's do this again. So it goes up. And right here, it might be a little bit dark. Maybe if I was to crank open my exposure here, you could see there's something that comes out of there. I'm just going to open up the exposure here. Okay, now everything is going to be terribly overexposed except this right here. Yeah, there, there, there is something that comes out of here. And the other side, it kind of looks the same. I have no idea what it is. Let's see if I can find another picture. Or drawing, rather. Okay, here again, we're looking at the starboard side. You can see it comes along, curves, and it goes up. And it ends right there, and something probably very important comes out of there. And doesn't this look like some sort of uh, armor pl plating? Yeah, I think it's just to protect something. I, I, at first I thought it was supposed to be some sort of a uh, uh, an air air vent or something, but, you know, that didn't make sense. But But this does make sense. Maybe there's some sort of special wiring there. Or maybe this thing, whatever it is, is of extreme importance and they don't want it damaged by, you know, enemy fire or something like that. I don't know. This piece goes right here. And the ladder will go right beside it. 
Now you notice it's got this little mark here. That's so that it's supposed to bend right there. I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to maybe put a little dab of glue. Let me get this out of here. Oh boy, that scratched easy. That was just with the rubber too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that's a piece of dust. Well, that was a relief. Okay. Um, anyway, I guess I must have something on this on these tweezers. Uh, I think this time I'm going to just put a little bit of CA, just a tiny bit, like here and here and here and here, and just glue it on. I'm going to try that. Okay, let's see if we can get this in place now before that cures. Let's hold it down here. Thing. It didn't uh, go in there very good. Put a little pressure, maybe. Yeah, I think we got it. As for this piece right here, I'm not going to do anything else with it. I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, I don't know if I should try and get any glue underneath right here and up here at the top. You can't see it, but it's if you noticed on the uh, drawings in the photograph, this piece was out a bit from the funnel anyway. So that's sort of the way it was. It was on the uh, on the real ship. Now, as for the ladder, I don't think I can use that same uh, that same idea for the ladder, and it is supposed to go right close to that to this piece. <laughs> One of the viewers in yesterday's episode says I should have a sign that says stop poking. And I think I said something back to him to the effect of you got that right. Uh, I guess I was getting tired there and I didn't realize that I didn't record gluing the ladder on until I started doing my editing here just now. As you're going to hear, I wasn't planning on recording doing the other side, but maybe when I get to the latter part, if I'm doing it exactly the same way as I did this side, I'll record it, and then you'll know what I did. Otherwise, sorry about that. You know it's possible, I'm just going to make this uh, look more obvious. Well, I guess we'll know once that's dry. This ladder is slightly towards you, the bottom of it should be about a half a millimeter this way. But once again, nobody's going to notice this. Well, we'll be doing the other side exactly the same way. Only better if I can. I'm not going to video it, but we'll take a look at it after it's done.
Now, because the ladder does not fit between those two parallel lines running down the side of the funnel, I'm assuming it's supposed to sort of sit on top of them. And that way the rungs are sort of, you know, held out away from the side of the funnel. I think that's the way it's supposed to be, and that's what I'm trying to do here. And as you can see, it's not going too well. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, I think this CA is cured now. I want to be careful, I don't want to glue the ladder to the stick. I do believe we've got it. And here we can see a bit of a glaring disappointment when I was taking the masking tape off of that one spot there. To my surprise, the primer let go. And I didn't think that masking tape was on there that hard. There must have been a little bit of grease there, possibly from my fingers or who knows what. I don't think there's release agent on, on Photo Edge. But uh, anyway, yeah. Well, you know what it means when we glue the last of the photo etch on? Well, it means we're done with step 39. Uh, well, that's not 100% true because just about two minutes ago, I was going to hide it, but I accidentally broke this off. So I guess I got to glue it back on. Goes right there, but that'll be easy. I guess I got a little bit over exuberant when I grabbed hold of this thing. Uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Uh, that, that, that'll be easy. That'll be fast. I'm not even going to bother videoing it. And uh, today was voting day in Manitoba. Yeah, time to vote for a new provincial government. Or maybe keep the old one in. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's really, we're really lucky to live in a democratic society. I'm very happy about that. Anyway, uh, I know that I, I could put these cranes on. Uh, they actually were supposed to be put on in this step, but you know, they, they go on right here. And I want to save that for later uh, because I will be handling this, you know, and as you just saw, well, you didn't see it happen, but I told you about it and I didn't have to. Okay, you know me, I've got to show everything, so watch closely, and in this little flashback, you'll see it actually happen. Notice how I try to hide it here? Uh, yeah, it's easy to break stuff off when you're handling these pieces. They get more and more progressively fragile as the build continues, and... I'm always happy like with the last major piece when we finally put the last little piece on it and then I don't need to handle it anymore. Anyway, let's just see what we've got here for step 40. I'll save my little toothpick and the piece of masking tape that tore the paint off. Anyway, okay, step 40. It's still dealing with this thing. And there's some really delicate photo etch we have to put on. And some lights, that'll make it look nice. These things are optional, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, let's see what we can do. Still got a couple hours yet today. Now, besides the piece that we have to glue back on, 
some of our major pieces that are difficult to make, like the searchlights, they're already made. So uh, don't need to worry about those. And we need four of them. I think there's seven left. We used one up, what, about a month ago? Anyway, we need uh, J43 for plastic parts. Noticing there's also a J43 up here. Okay, J43. It looks like it's some kind of a horn. We'll, we'll take a close look at it later. We'll just carefully snip it off here. And the other J sprue. Okay, we got those. Now, G17. You know there's only two, spe two pieces left on the G sprue, and this is one of them. Be careful how I nip here now. Now the L25s, the guns, we've made them up a long time ago. J20, we need one, two, three, four. Four J20s. So I kind of scared myself there for a minute. There's, uh, we only need two J20s, and it's a good thing because there's only one on each of these uh, J sprues here. So, uh, yeah. Okay, there's a 20. And there's the other one. Okay, the other is J22. Okay, it's slightly different, so I don't need to worry about getting it mixed up. These are <clears throat> these are these things that are optional, and uh, the idea is that I guess these these will go up and hide the light. It could be that uh, I guess they figured it, look, it looks like these are the only only two of these lights get covered. Uh, that's strange. I wonder why they wouldn't cover all of them. Anyhow, I don't think I'm going to use these because they're going to cover the light. And as far as I'm concerned, the searchlight is much more interesting than this thing. No, there's another way of looking at it. There's eight searchlights. So, uh, you know, if, if uh, two of the eight were covered up, well, you still would get to see the other six. And if you don't put these on, well, you don't get to see this either. I'll have to think about it. Anyway, maybe in the comments below, what do you think? Should I use these uh, and cover up two of the lights or have all of the lights showing? You know what? Uh, I think we better cut this video short here. So, uh, thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. And remember, should we cover up two and have, have these showing? Yeah, in the comments below, please.